Hey team, welcome to Health Stats IQ. It's a series all about the fundamentals of health statistics. Today we're going to look at something called age-adjusted mortality rates, also known as standardization. But as you can see, we've got a bunch of videos and if you want to see any of those, I'll put a link in the description for the playlist for the Health Stats IQ catalog. So you can check all those out. Also, you can check out zstatistics.com, which is my website, which has got plenty of stats videos on all different topics. And if you like what I do, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all those kind of things. Let's get straight into it, shall we? Standardization, here we come. Now, the way I like to run these videos is I go over the basics first, hoping to develop your intuition around the concept, after which we'll have a look at the two main types of standardization. That's indirect standardization, which incorporates a concept called standardized mortality ratios or SMRs. So if you've heard of SMRs, that's where we're going to be dealing with them. And then we'll look at direct standardization and we'll see the differences between the two. And I'm gonna be using some interesting examples here to do with the coronavirus, one being from the USA and the other looking at the coronavirus outbreak in India. All right, so let's jump into the basics. So I guess the question we need to ask is how can we compare mortality rates between different populations? So let's just say we've got two countries here, Sweden and India. And furthermore, let's say we've calculated the crude mortality rate at the end of the coronavirus pandemic and we've found that 2.5 per 1,000 population died in Sweden, whereas that compared to 1.7 per 1,000 population in India. Now, I've called this a crude rate and that's just because it's as simple as taking the total number of deaths, dividing by the population and then just multiplying by 1,000 to give us a number that makes it a little bit more intuitive. We want to know the number per 1,000 population. So that's why we multiply by 1,000. Nonetheless, we might be tempted to compare these crude rates between these two different populations. But there's a big problem in doing so. Check this out. These are the population pyramids for Sweden and India respectively. And what this shows, if you've got the age groups up the middle here, this shows the distribution of the population across various age groups. So you can see that Sweden has a much larger percentage of its population above the age of, say, 75 years old. India's population is very heavily weighted towards the younger age groups. Well, what does this mean? Well, it actually implies there's going to be a problem if we're just trying to compare these crude mortality rates because don't forget, most of the mortality is going to be coming from these older age groups, right? So Sweden almost has this sort of artificial disadvantage because it has a higher proportion of older people in its population to begin with. Now, this is really the reason why we need to standardize. Because when we're comparing two populations, they're likely going to have a different age profile. And this is true of many of the likely comparisons we're wanting to make, such as the male mortality rate versus the female mortality rate, say, indigenous cultures versus the general population, or indeed comparing country to country. So it's really critical to adjust for these differing age distributions. Otherwise, it's really biasing our comparisons of mortality rates between the groups. So shall we learn how to do this? Let's go and have a look at indirect standardization. So the question I want to ask here is, do black Americans have a higher COVID-19 mortality rate than the general American population? Now this question was inspired by a lot of articles I've been reading about how COVID-19 seems to be disproportionately affecting black Americans over the rest of the population. So, so I thought I'd use this as an example where standardization might help us quantify that difference. So before we jump into some numbers, let's just get some terminology out of the way. We'll say that the uh, population of black Americans is going to be our study population, whereas the general American population, we'll call that our standard 
population. So we're going to apply the standard to our study population. And what indirect standardization does is if we're concerned with the study population, what we do is we actually start from the standard population. We start in this blue zone, finding the mortality rates in the standard population first. So we approach the general American population and say, let's find the mortality rates for COVID-19 across the age groups. We then apply those rates to find the expected number of deaths in our black American community. And then in comparing those to the actual deaths, we can construct these things called standardized mortality ratios or SMRs. So let's just see how that works in action. So step one is to find the mortality rates in the standard population. That's in the general American population. Stratified by age group. Now it's important that we have that stratification because that's essentially what this whole standardization process is all about. We're thinking that the black American population might have a different age distribution. So we need to account for that when we're assessing their death rate. So this here is the standard population and the number of deaths per 1000 people. We're quite clearly we'd be expecting this to increase as the age group increases such that we've got 7.1 deaths per 1000 population in that upper age group of 75 plus. Now these numbers I've just pulled from thin air, I'm just making a nice example for us so we can um, do some nice calculations a bit later on. But it's likely that we might start seeing these kinds of data coming in at the end of the pandemic because we want to know, well, what was the result of the whole pandemic? We're no longer interested in the deaths per diagnosis. We want to know this thing called the cause specific death rate, which actually looks at the number of deaths per population, which actually makes things a lot easier because you don't have to worry about stuff like testing rates and all that kind of stuff. So. Step two is that we're, now we're going to use our study population, which is our black American population. We're going to use their age distribution to find the number of expected deaths we might have for the black American community. And when I say expected, I mean how many deaths we'd expect if they had the same age distribution as the general population. So here is the number of people identifying as black alone in the most recent census. And this is split by those age groups again. Now to find the expected deaths in each of these categories, it's as simple as multiplying these two columns together. If there are 15.4 million Americans identified as black alone in the zero to 24 age group, to get the expected deaths, of course, we're going to multiply by 0.1, but don't forget we then have to divide by a thousand as well, because that's 0.1 deaths per 1000 population. So that gives us 1540. You can do that all the way along to get the expected deaths in each age category. And just keeping in mind, these are completely fictional numbers. So step three then compares the total expected deaths to the actual deaths. And what we can do is find this thing called the standardized mortality ratio, which is in fact the actual deaths divided by the expected deaths. Now let's just say there are 65,000 deaths in my theoretical example at the end of the coronavirus. We can divide that by the total number of expected deaths, which is just the sum from that final column of step two. And we can see that we actually got a lot more deaths than we might have expected if the black American population had the same death rates that the general population experienced. So that means we can calculate a standardized mortality ratio of 2.06. So that's going to help us answer the question we had right at the very beginning, which is, do black Americans have a higher COVID-19 mortality rate than the general American population? Well, yes, they do. They actually have a mortality rate, which is 2.06 times that of the general American population. Of course, that's using my hypothetical data, but we might find this exact analysis being done in the wash up of the coronavirus outbreak. Okay, so shall we move on to direct standardization? So direct standardization might help us answer this kind of question. Can we compare the COVID mortality rate in Kerala, which is a region in India, 
to the rest of India. Now, again, let's just make sure we're aware of the terminology. Kerala will be our study population and India is going to be our standard population. So before we do any standardization, we might find that the crude rate of deaths in Kerala, again, I've completely imagined these numbers. Let's just say it's 2.2 deaths per 1,000. And for India as a whole, it was 1.7 deaths per 1,000. So looking at those rates, you might think, oh, okay, well, Kerala actually did quite a bit worse than the rest of India in terms of their mortality rate from COVID-19. But again, there might be this hidden issue where the age distribution of Kerala is more heavily weighted to the older generations than the rest of India. And in fact, this is likely to be the case. There have been many articles recently looking at the age distribution of Kerala and saying that they actually have an impending issue of generational dependency, meaning that they have a lot more older retired people than in other regions in India. So again, this might be a likely analysis that happens within a particular nation's coronavirus analysis. So the question might then be, can we standardize this crude rate applying the standard of the Indian age distribution? So we're basically going to try to say, all right, if the crude rate was 2.2 deaths per 1,000, what would the deaths have been if Kerala had the same age distribution as India? So let's see how calculations like that might pan out. Now, again, if we're doing direct standardization, appreciate that we're coming from the study population and moving to the standard population. Notice this is the reverse of what happened with indirect standardization. So here we go straight to the source. We go, let's look at the actual death rates occurring in Kerala. We're then going to find the expected number of deaths in the standard population using Kerala's death rate. And that'll help us find this age standardized mortality rate. So let's go, shall we? So this is the population for each age bracket for Kerala. 9.9 .9 million, 13.8 million, etc., etc. And we can also have the number of deaths for each of these age groups. Again, numbers I've just created myself. And we can then find the number of deaths per 1000 population. Pretty simply, we just do the number of deaths divided by the population, and then we make sure it's per 1,000. So we times that by 1,000. Anyway, we get this a death rate per age group. So what we can do now is drag this down and use these rates to find the expected deaths in the standard population, which would be India's entire population. So we're basically saying, if India was experiencing the same death rate as Kerala, how many people would die in the entire nation of India? Now, these numbers look absolutely crazy, but that's, of course, due to the high population of India and sitting here well before the end of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm very much hoping that these numbers are purely demonstrational and have no basis in reality. But to calculate them, of course, you just take the number of deaths per 1,000 population and multiply it by the total population, remembering that factor of 1,000 in there as well. So again, we'd have to divide by 1,000 just to net that out. So step three is going to be to find the age standardized mortality rate. So to do this, we're going to take the total expected deaths, which is the sum of this whole column here, and divide by the total population. So we can add up all the deaths up here. We can then put the population on the bottom. And in doing this division, we find that we get 1.2 per 1,000 population. So what essentially we've done here is we've taken the death rate for Kerala and applied that death rate to the age distribution of the entire nation of India to say, well, if Kerala had that same age distribution of India, what would be its death rate? And it turns out to be 1.2 per 1,000 population. So what does that mean? Well, if we go back to the question we were asking, it says, can we compare the COVID mortality rate in Kerala to the rest of India? And indeed we can. It turns out that the age standardized death rate is 1.2 deaths per 1,000 people. So 
Just looking at the crude rates, we actually got a false impression of how well Kerala was doing in comparison to the rest of India. And once we took the age distributions into account, Kerala turned out to be doing uh, better than the rest of India in terms of reducing the mortality rate. But that is it, my friends. That's standardization. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll put all of the Health Stats IQ videos in a playlist, which I'll link in the description. Or if you want to see any of the videos I make, you can check me out on zstatistics.com. Take care out there, and I hope you're safe and well. See you next time.